Good morning, legends. Hopefully you're tucking into a few chockies this morning. And if you're like my good mate, Josh, who doesn't like chocolate, you've got some lollies or something that you can get into because that was his Easter food of choice. So there you go. That's that one. Also, guys, get in the comments. We got anyone who feels like they're absolutely having a shocker this week. Let me know how many players. So put your score and then slash how many players and with a C next to it if you've used your captain. And if you think you're doing well, let me know as well. I'll uh, reply to both options. No slander, no hate in there. If you do, I will be deleting the comment. So let's uh, show a bit of love on Easter Sunday. But Dragons, 20 to 12 over the Eagles. So this was the, uh, <laughs> I was talking to someone about it and I was like, well, if there's any any game here that might be the opposite to what we exactly what we think it is and it'd be a very low chance of happening, it would be this game. And it happened that the Dragons... Got the wood over the Eagles in this one. And uh, look, they smashed them. The Eagles weren't even close in this game. They scored one fairly late, obviously, to Olakuatu. And he picked up a 62 with a try and uh, good run meters for him. This is a big improvement for Ola. What we always saw from him was, you know, you get 120 or 130 run meters. They'd be good runs, but wouldn't have the extras. And this year he's doing that, which is great. And then it gives him opportunities to score tries as well. So shout out to Matty T, who uh, got a 39 out of him last week, bringing him in, but a uh, 62 in this one. So what's that, a just under 50 average across the... No, just over 50 across the two, which is good. So yeah, good stuff for him. And anyone that bought Hamole in, like, he's been really, really good. 9%, 56 is the average. Very, very good. But obviously there's going to be... We'll get to the, the shocking start, the, the shocking part of this first, and that's Tommy Chaboyevich. So... He had a couple of good plays, obviously the the turnover tackle and uh, try saver there uh, on, the, on the wing for Ravalawa, I believe. And then the offload line break assist try assist, which he was like that far from the ground from scoring as well, um, but flicked it out to Kola there. So that were the two good plays in this one. And then very similar to last night with, with Drinky, he had five errors there and it was a bit of a shocker. It was five errors in like 30 minutes. And yeah, it's a weird one. How do you... How do you decide, you know, how do you work out what's going on with, with a few of these games? And and look, when your attacking players start to drop the ball this much, when you're kind of in a bit of a funk as a team, it, it really just drops down the quality of your game and, and uh, of this game. As, as a few people said, it was a bit of a poo slinger. And uh, Dragons defended well. Like, Manly didn't throw a lot at them compared to other weeks. They looked slow. They looked lethargic. They, yeah, maybe it's those last few weeks big games that kind of got to them and they thought they might be able to do this one easy but if you did captain Tommy this was in his low range obviously the lowest score of his season shock when you decide to captain him that's how it works but um that was what we we're thinking yeah it was a decent chance that he'd get a 40 odd 40 39 whatever and then you had that 20 to 30 percent chance that he went bonkers and 65 plus you know kind of thing and unfortunately it was on the low end and uh yeah that's the risk that you take if they win this game by 10 or 12 then he probably does get 60 wasn't to be um he had a bit of a shocker himself and yeah it's just how it goes sometimes unfortunately i did decide to captain him in the head ted squad and captain him in my super coach team so it was a bit of a punt that that hasn't paid off but it's not you know the end of it end of your season or anything like that like you've just lost 20 points that's fine 26 points if you went if someone went to Rel Mayo for you, like if they had Tommy, but they just went to Rel as captain, it's 26 points is the difference. You know, Pat Carrigan is 23 points. Like it's not, it's not the end of the world. Across the season, it's fine. So you want to take the punt. That's what it was. Just leave it at that and move on. It's all good. All right. So yeah, Ola was good. Ben Hunt, 55. So another good score from him. He's been a little bit up and down, but uh, solid in this one. Obviously, when they can win, he's going to be in the thick of it there with three try assists and 570 run meters. Jaden Sewell with a try in this one, up to a 48 average. So he'll start to make a little bit of money now and get closer to that 660, 670, 680, if he can keep this average, which would be good. Jack DeBellin, another 50 in 62 minutes. That's a couple of decent weeks in a row for him in that slightly lower minutes. He's been moving a lot better, it looks like, compared to that first couple of games. So maybe he was a, bit, a little bit underdone coming into the season, but he's been improving his average the last couple of weeks. Daily Cherry Evans. So another one we're looking out for over the next few weeks, guys, is that 48 from him. Gives him an average of 42.8 to kick off the season. He'll be down about 110, 115, 20 over uh, next week when we come into that, which will be very interesting. Him closer to 750. We also have Sean Johnson going down as well. 
That 60 last week would have helped, and it looks like SJ will be kicking goals again. So I would be selecting Sean over DCE, especially with without the origin for SJ as well. But um, definitely someone that if you do like him, we know what he can score. He was a you know, early 60 average guy last year, and we have to see that happen eventually, and it just wasn't his best game either. But still an okay score. 48 for Gerbo. We had 47 for Paseka. What was he doing on that um, that kick that went through? He was just like standing there and they just like ran past him and scored. It was just like, do you not know where the ball was? Or was it lazy? I'm not sure, but that was a bit of a shocker. Garrick, 45. If you've got him, you, you take that in this loss because, you know, he worked hard defensively. A couple of goals, no attacking stats. To still get 45 is, is really, really good signs for Ruben and his time at center. But um, yeah, Manly need to win. They do need to win these games. What about Eisenhuth? We just got absolutely hammered by him, haven't we? In the first four weeks, he's up, what, 100 and going to be 110k 115k after this after in four weeks so shocker 47 average just going a point a minute basically at the moment in in these ones in the middle coming off the bench i believe he got moved to the bench he's been moved in and out of the starting lineup and raymond for talamara has been the same each and every week and for tommy this one just another good score and he's getting tackle breaks he's getting attacking stats which is wild i think he got a line break given to him in in supercoach as well which he didn't hear so I think there's a few contentious ones that people are looking at and people asking me about the Pat Carrigan one. You have to, like, in fantasy especially, usually, like, usually, again, you have to completely break the line. But if the line's a bit staggered and you run around, these guys are through this gap with this part of the line. So you've got this section here on the right side, let's say, is up. And then you've got this section here on the left side is back a little bit. What's going to happen is if he runs through that gap, but these guys come over and, and stop him there, then a lot of the time they don't give that line break, which is fair enough in a way. But yeah, it looks like he's kind of got through past that line about five meters and it's like, well, why isn't the line break? So sometimes that's how they call it. It's, yeah, it can be hit and miss for sure. Cause yeah, it's someone, it's someone adjudicating on it. And like, well, how much have they got through that line or have they got past that second part of the line? And then they're, they're chasing back to get him. There's so many things to think about there. But anyway, 45 for Eisenhuth, he's just crushed us. He's absolutely crushed us. And congrats to the 2% that went with him. Bird, 44 with a try. was better for him. Luciano, 41. He'll lose a little bit more cash, but he's kind of averaging pretty close to where he's priced at. Not someone we want to, we want to look at anyway. Blake Laurie with 40. Little with 40 in his 61 minutes. So decent on that front. Basically all in base stats there. And uh, there will be games he'll get some attack. But um, yeah, I think he's... Money making potential has probably stopped at the moment after this last couple of weeks. How good's Flanner Gun? Little try assist in there. A couple of line break assists there. Got a turnover tackle at the end. 30 tackles, two misses. This is kind of what everyone hoped would, would happen. And then, you yeah, know, he had that shocker in round two and a lot of people sold him. So if, you, if you're still holding on, which is 20% of you, you're absolutely loving life. Him and Hacho were just the clear halves to start with, weren't they? <laughs> um, it's worked out pretty well for both of them given they went. Yeah, Flanagan's got 48 and 40 last two, I believe, and then Hacho's 37 and 45. So both making money now. Not a, a buy for anyone, but a clear hold for a bunch of weeks now. You've done done pretty well with Flano, and he's, he's playing all right, especially in these games that they're winning. He's got two tries now, a few try assists. He's doing his job, and he outdid Turbo. That's sad. That is sad. Uh, Cola with 39 for anyone who grabbed him. A low one last week, much better this week. Sloan, 39 with two tries. So, yeah, is what it is. He's priced at 550 though. Ravalawa 38. Lomax 34. So a little bit of a low one for him, but no attacking stats as well. A little bit lower on the run meters side also, but they yeah, they did well without him. They didn't need him as much this game to to score anyway. Sipley, welcome back to him. 30 in 25. So the work ethic was there, that's for sure. Molo. Luke Brooks 29. Yeah, a bit of a lower one for him, but no attacking stats at all. Compared to all the other games, he's had plenty of attack in there. And then you've got, yeah, Fatala Mariner, 27. So he started really well and you know, has that 37 average in the last couple of weeks. It's been a bit lower. Jackson Barlow there. There's actually some news following this game that I should mention as well that apparently Lomax is, uh, yeah, Lomax is, is in talks with Manly. Well, Dragons are in talks with Manly to potentially switch Josh Schuster over to Dragons and Dragons get, uh, and then Manly get Lomax. So I think that's the best trade of all time for for Manly, not sure about that for uh, for Dragons with Schuster, but 
yeah, if that's the immediate release, it's it's in talks. It's funny, like just has got a bigger deal than that of Lomax. So again, that feels hard to believe, but it's exactly what was reported too. So yeah, very interesting that. So let me know what your your thoughts are on that transfer in the comments below as well. All right, uh, Nathan Brown, good minutes, but not scoring well enough at all. Tw- averaging 27 for the season now. Sawley, oh, this is where it gets tough now. 22 for him. He's a clear trade to... Well, if you've got enough centers, he's, he's, you can trade him to anyone. If you didn't get Pap, you can go for him. Obviously, we had Jaden Campbell. There's a few at that sort of price point. There's a few that we can look at next week. And if, you, you're, if you're set with your centers, Blaze Talangi, obviously a solid one there. Um, any of the dual position guys is cool. But yeah, I think that the 22 there in a game where they win, it's just not getting much ball out that, out that side and, and nothing in good, in good territory either. So... 22 for him, averaging 30 for the season. It's not the worst in the world, but that 22 makes him lose money now. And that becomes frustrating. Speaking of frustrating, we got two to finish there. Tommy Talau with 14. Uh, turnover tackle near the end. One or two decent runs there and an offload to ground. But um, 14, look, you take the extra the extra points, but you wanted more. Not No one will be buying him. And then Burbo, 22. He actually started really well. I think it was 21 in 25 minutes. And yeah, where'd that go from there? I think he's got scored one point in in another 20 odd minutes. So not good on that front. Uh, had an error in there, a couple of missed tackles, a penalty, an inside 10. Not playing his best. He did start much better in this game, but then kind of fell away. So yeah, losing extra minutes each and every game now. And he's a big worry. He's done for money making. I think if he, if he plays 50 minutes, this was a game you'd hope that he'd come up against a team where he could score a try. And that wasn't to be. So Corey Waddell coming in and Yes, missed a couple of tackles, but he does not have the errors and the penalties and the like that that Burbo has at the moment. So that's not good. Yeah, he's a worry for next week. We'll have to work out the situation of our teams and who's out again if we have a million outs as to if he's a, a guy on the chopping block as well. If, if Sully and Burbo are your, are your centers, like my head-to-head team, it's not a um, not an ideal situation, I think, when, yeah, especially the head-to-head team trying to make money, that's not going to happen anymore for both those guys. And then Harmsell come back with a 13 in 26 minutes. So very low on the uh, PPM front, but yeah, good to see him back out there doing his thing. That's for sure after a good layoff. So check out for him if he starts to lose money over the next few weeks, and then we can have a look at picking him up. All right, Titans and Dolphins. Ugh, alarming signs for the Titans, really, because Dolphins lost Plath for 10 in the bin, and they still got smashed 30 to 14. So, you know, Fafita was back, Campbell was back. They were basically all hands on deck. And uh, couldn't do it. Couldn't even get close. So congrats to the Dolphins again. An incredible effort. As I said, with one down for 10 minutes. You know, coming up against a team that had a lot to play for in the Titans. And they were just able to get the job done away from home. Asako, welcome back to the good scoring, mate. 74 puts him up to a 52 average. So he's still been solid. Like he's in the early 40s. But that 74 puts him over the top now. Back to where, higher than where he's priced at. Last year, you know, he was a 48 average or something like that for the season and now up to 52. So great work down their right-hand side. Him and uh, Farnworth worked really well for that try. So that line break down the sideline back into to Farnworth there. So good stuff with Herbie for getting it out to him and realizing the, the quality of, of winger he's got there and the speed that he possesses. And that, that was really good. If you grabbed Hammer or if you started with him, a 59 is absolutely flying. Two try assists to try two line breaks in this one. 164 meters, so that's good on that front. And 55 average for the start of the season. He's, he started even better than that of last year. And, and it looks like that you know, a couple of these Dolphins were the play in the first weeks because of the, the quality of, of matchups that they had. And, and even that Cowboys one, we know that they leak, they're they leaky in defense and uh, everyone else they've faced so far is in the same boat with the Dragons and then the Titans as well. So it was just that buy in the middle. That was a little bit annoying. Flegler. 58 and 51 minutes here with a terrific try assist off that, off that offload to how many the line and uh, yeah he's getting to, he's getting those couple offloads he's getting those couple of tackle breaks there and I just wanted to have a little bit of a deeper dive into him in this one so 54 minutes in the first 51 and 50 so it's about what we expected on the minutes front 50 to 55 and his PPM has has absolutely risen so much higher so it was an 8.86 for his seasons and now he's 1.04. So 
can that in, can that can, can that keep up is the question so you've got to try a line break you've got to try assist and a line break assist we have three tackle breaks a game 1.7 offloads a game there and he's only missed one tackle across the first bunch of seasons, uh, first bunch of weeks with good pretty normal meters gain markers and error a couple of penalties there as well and only one one turnover tackle out of the three so you look at that right and go well these are awesome stats and 54 average across that first three games is incredible. And he's going to be priced at about 42 after this week with about 20, 25,000 or so he'll go up at least. So be up to 590 and he definitely has some more money to make. But the question is with Flegler is how much, right? How many times can he get these attacking stats? How many times can he go through a game without missed tackles is the question. And can he keep up with three tackle breaks a game? I will say it looks like his game has improved. So I'm going to give him three to four points on that, just on his improvement. But outside of that, this 54 does seem a little bit inflated due to the opposition that he's coming up against. And I think I expect him to do pretty well against the Tigers again. The question here is, he got a 48 in 51 minutes. They did, they did smash the Dragons, right? 38-0 in that one. But that was all in base and, and just some offloads, right? So he had three offloads, two to hand, one to ground. But... He hasn't had to make big tackles in these games as well. So you'll see there in the Cowboys one when the Cowboys beat them that he had to make more tackles. And it was still 33 in that one. But then he has the the other side of the game where he has the attack and got the try. So I think that he can score in both ways. There'll be games where he has bigger tackle numbers, probably less so on the run meter side and you know maybe one or two less tackle breaks or offloads. But those extra 10 tackles will will cover that. I do just think, though, he might be like a 47 type of guy going forward. And if that's the case, then he's got about five points of value after this week. And is that worth bringing in for a guy that is going to play Origin? So he's going to miss 13, 16, 13, 14, 16, 18, 19. So if you were to bring him in, it is just a play for now all the way till Origin and then you're selling from there. So I just want to go for a little deeper dive into Flegler because I know we're going to get questions on him. And I do think that he's playing really, really good footy and uh, deserves a little bit of recognition. Felice Kafusi with a big one as well. Good on him. He's uh, come back to come back to the world with some good scores. And I want to speak about Ewan Aiken now because he was a guy that we were speaking about. And, and the, the worry is still there about Connolly Lamuelu. But it's really hard going around watching him just absolutely accumulate points here. No negatives in this game. 35 tackles, a tackle break, 147 on the run meters with a force dropout for 53 points. And... That's a 46 and a 53 now, a 45 and a 53, which gives him that 49 average over two weeks. And he's going to make some money. He's going to be, if he's going to continue playing this way, then he's going to have similar numbers to that of Flegler of about a 50 average going forward. And that's what he does average in the centers. Uh, so as a edge back rower, but playing in the centers. So if he, if Lemuel doesn't come back straight away, which is a chance because he's coming off injury, in the next couple of weeks and um and Aiken keeps that 80 minute roll that's gonna burn me so hard but yeah congrats if you did jump on in round three or even this week hopefully it um hopefully it lasts longer for you all right my worry now we got Fafita we'll talk about Campbell at the same time and Fafita got 51 into 56 minutes and that was with a try saver and a turnover tackle so let's say this that doesn't happen every week he still scored great like he's almost a point a minute and he's only playing 56 right the thing is with Fafida in this team is he will have games where he has to do everything, right? But he's also going to have a lot of games where he's standing behind the sticks and not really given an opportunity to get ball in hand and and yeah, get a lot of tackle breaks, get a lot of offloads. So I'm worried for Fafida longer term. If he gets to down to if he was to get down to about 750 or something like that, then you look at him and go, okay, there's probably he's at least going to score that and might have a little bit of value now. But at the moment, I don't think you can go for Fafita at this price because of how bad the team is. That's my main worry with Dave at this point. And I think we'll leave it there because he's obviously an incredible player and gets involved in the stats at all times. And he's a 60 plus guy on a regular basis, but I'm just worried for how the team is looking at the moment. Javon Jolliffe, guys, 49, <laughs> end up with that try there. 45 minutes he's still got. So I still don't think with the 45 minutes, he's going to be worth a buy. If he was to get to 55 or 60, then that'd be great. But <clears throat> there's a little bit of a weird one here with the with the Titans pack because we end up getting Fafita for 56 minutes off the bench. You had Cleese Haas who played 48 minutes and then you had 
for more playing 80. So they had three edge guys play some good minutes. And then you had Randall playing 67 or something with Verrills playing some lower minutes. So it didn't get split to Aaron Clark either. Like this bloke just can't get minutes and he keeps scoring well, but just can't get the minutes. So nothing really changed for the important players to look at as a, from a fantasy perspective in terms of the points that they could get with inflated minutes and none of them really got those minutes. So yeah, Joloff obviously the one that was the play, if anything, just because of his PPM and what he can do. But um, yeah, I don't think with 45 minutes, you'll um, get much benefit from it apart from these games where he scores tries or the work ethic is just crazy high in that game. Phil Sami got absolutely crunched and then yeah, by that by that Max Blath tackle and, and he kind of went on and played the rest of the game. So that's great. I hope he's fine. It's an interesting one, that Plath situation, isn't it? Because what they say, they want to eradicate um, body coming down on, on body, so body on legs. And he didn't. It was just like, because he had a couple other guys tackling him. It just shows how bad that, that type of tackle is. And I'm not sure if they'll throw the book at him or it'll be you know, a couple of weeks or or whatever. Or they, you know, by the letter of the law that he didn't come down on his legs. So not sure, but um, yeah, it's a wild one. Thank God Sammy's okay. Or at least okay enough to finish the game for him. Marshall King, 47, just fine at the moment. If you've got him, you're holding. Outside of that, don't look to buy him. Bromwich was great. Jesse did a good job there. Got a try assist. Uh, Bostop, I think he lost a turnover tackle at the end. He was 52 overnight. But if you've got him, if you had to play him this week, obviously you would have. You, you pick up the 45 and he's had a good start, guys. 36, obviously. A couple of tries, three tries now in the last two weeks. Lovely stuff from him. I think he got one in the first game. So he might have four in the four in the four games. And 36 is the average. So good stuff for him. Obviously, against some of these lesser teams, he's going to get tries. But he does look solid. He ran for 140, six tackle breaks, had the offloads. Sorry, had the had the line breaks and had the tries there as well. And he beat like three defenders in that that first try. So yeah, good on him. Good on him. Josh Kerr, 44 and 26. How good's he going? Just um, hates a negative stat. Oh, he got one one penalty, but um, he was awesome. Cleese Haas set 42 in this one. Farnworth, 41. Haas is going to be... Yeah, Cleese got a good score out of him this one. He's probably going to be a sell now with David coming back and likely in that starting side. But who knows? They they obviously liked how Cleese was playing because he got um he got a few extra minutes and you know, we might have thought he would have. Farnworth with a try, got 41. Keep looking at his score after a while. It might be a buy eventually. Once they... You know, if the, if the team's really clicking against the harder teams, then, then he could... Come into our calculations. Randall, the 41. I think just at, at nine, guys. We want him at 13 because he doesn't run the footy at nine. Four and 38. Good on him. Nichols, Plath there, 36. If you grabbed on him, I just that was the worry with the minutes. And he obviously got a sim bin as well. So, yeah, a bunch of things that, that didn't go right for him. But, he, yeah, he works hard. He, you want 55 minutes and no sim bins would be great. And you're getting a 45 or a 50 average. Both for more, cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. We'll get him closer to 500 soon and... And he'll be a buy. He's killing my super coach team because it's just not, nothing's happening for him. Mo Foot Awake got the extra minutes. About what we expected there. Somewhere near the 60, 57 for him. But uh, points aren't there. So keep an eye out on, on Mo as well. Just, um, yeah, it's not happening for him. All the Titans at the moment. And it needs to soon. Oh, Anyone that grabbed Tanar is just, it's just getting, going from bad to worse. He doesn't really ever have these games as well where he misses lots of tackles. And, and this was one of them. Not good. Not good. He's... um. His job's on the line, I think, too, at the moment. Although, as soon as we said that last year, he went on an absolute tear and I sold him, didn't we? So, yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> uh, Avrilo, 28. Campbell, guys, 27. So, he was 30 overnight, back to 27. Not not nice. This is the main worry with him. Obviously, there's talents there. And he, he made that nice line break and a few a few good things happened there with the, um, with the four tackle breaks. 188 meters. So, there's some good signs, but it wasn't Keeney's fault. Let's just say that. Campbell got 27. Kenny was getting 18. Campbell is a better player than Kenny, so that makes sense. But just the opportunities aren't there for him. They're going to be trying things. There are going to be some errors in there. Just a one for him in this game, but he's just not getting put in good ball to uh, to be able to put on tries or to be able to go through himself. So this is going to be a work in progress. He looks solid enough, guys. So obviously, if you're born him, you're not super sad about it, but you're not happy at 27. You want it to be in the 40s. That was the goal. And he was looking like... I think he got to about 30 in game in um, 62 minutes. So he had an opportunity to get into the 40s and they just, yeah, a few tries went on the board from from the Dolphins at that point. So he's not a buy next week, I don't think. He's uh, a clear hold and uh, that's where we'll leave it. 
And then, uh, yeah, Clark with 30 minutes, not good enough. Isaiah Katoa and Cody Nikarima, 24 and 23. Cody compared to Katoa. And, yeah, Isaiah, we're looking at as a potential buy this week. And, yeah, my, the worry with him was more that you've got a bit of a bank of games where he gets, like, in the 30s and 20s and then a few in the 40s and, and that 50 or the other day. He just looked like a better player. He still looks like a better player. just wasn't his night in terms of getting any type of attack. So 13 tackles for two misses and error. Ran the footy a little bit. Didn't kick anywhere near as much, you know, into that 450, 500 range. So it's just a bit of a lower one across the board. He'll be, he'll be fine. Next week, he'll probably come out and get a 40 or something. But um, yeah, not his night for that. They didn't have to go through him and off his boot as much as they did the week before. Annoying. Stimson getting more uh, minutes than Clark. That's a fun one. Uh, and then Verrills as well, 30 minutes. So yeah, decided to go with Randall a bit more and just trying things and didn't really work either. Khan Pereira averaging 14.7 for the season. So how good's that? All right, little uh, super coach finish here. So we go into the Dragons and the Eagles and we had some, yeah, good score from Eisenhuth. He's absolutely crushed and he's up, what, 40, uh, 37K. We up another 40 odd, 50 after that. Sloan a decent score in that one with a couple of tries, obviously. And uh, the other big talking point probably is Flanagan for anyone who owns him and Lomax, 42 apiece. This is all before updates, guys. And then, yeah, Suli's 20. Not ideal. Olakowatu with the try 87. So this is what my head Ted team had a pretty good day yesterday. My actual Supercoach team, not so much, given I've got Turbo as captain. He got 48. He'll go to about a 52, I think, maybe, with a couple of those offloads changing to effective offloads. They start them at ineffective for those that aren't sure. Um, and two points. And then if it, they base it as you know, a good pass, they bump it up a couple of points. So yeah, Olakua two good score. Garrick still solid, 61. Can't ask for much more in a, in a big loss. But yeah, Trebojevic would have been nicer as a captain. And then Brooks, a lot of people traded in Brooks and got 27. So he'll be fine. This was a terrible game for him. And um, just hold steady. But yeah, you're not happy with it. That's for sure. And then on the Titans... And Dolphin side, you've got both for more with 42, as I had, not great. Campbell, if he brought him in, 5'8", or fullback. Probably didn't because of Galvin in that position. And you're not trading him in at fullback round one. Um, and then up top, yeah, Brimson was solid. Phil Sami, the two tries. Jolliffe with 64 was a potential option this week. And good to see Fafita get 55. But um, yeah, watch him at least next week before making any moves on uh, him or Campbell. And on the Dolphin side, Hammer was the play this week. We thought that... He should be able to score pretty well against the Titans compared to a few of the other matchups. Like I ended up going for Val and got a low one this week, but he does come up against the Titans and he has that 140 upside, obviously, as you've seen. So Hammer was the play this week. You know, Dom Young had um, Panthers. Yeah, so there's there's a bunch of different options there. Lomax come up against the you know, Manly, didn't score as well. So Hammer was the pick of the bunch. Asako with 100 again, back to last year's good scores. My head head team had Bostock and Flegler. And then Olakowatu, so it was a much better game, a much better you know couple of games for for the head to head squad, which is fine. That's how it goes um, sometimes. But yeah, Bostock and Flegler both good scores for them. Bostock will make plenty of cash. I end up selling him two, three, or well, a couple of weeks ago in um, after the first week in my in my team. So shocker on that front. That's how it goes. Avrilo Plath thirty two for those that brought him in with the sin bin obviously hurts as well. So. That's that one, guys. We'll um, we'll leave this one there. Thanks for being around for this one. And there was plenty of discussion. And as I say, get in the comments and let me know your scores and we'll we'll go from there. Have a good Easter Sunday.